Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I want to look at some things with formulas. I'm going to do a problem where I just <clears throat> plug numbers into a formula. I'm going to look at the exact and approximate volume and surface area for a cylinder. I'm going to answer a word problem where you use a formula that's given in the word problem, and I'm also going to manipulate a formula and solve for a variable in there. So if that's anything you want to see, please stick with me as I get through the video. So in this one, we want to just substitute the given value. We have S, L, W, and H in this formula, and we're giving the, given the S, L, and W, which means we're going to need to figure out what the H is because we're going to plug everything else in. So to do that, we're going to just take our equation as given, where we see the S goes the 880. The 4 was given in the equation. The L was 16. The W was 11. The 2 was given up here. Again, the W is 11. And then we don't know what H is. So to start off, we just want to simplify what you can. 4 times 16 times 11, I got 704. And then 2 times 11, 22. The next thing you want to do is solve this equation for H. And so to do that, you're going to subtract 704 from both sides of the equation. And that's going to make that 704 drop out over there. And on the right left side, you'll have 176 equals that 22H. And to get rid of the 22, you divide both sides by 22. And that looks like 176 over 22 and 22 over 22. And over here, the 22s cancel out, leaving just that H. And on the left side, you have 8. And this did not give us any dimensions. I copied this from somewhere. So, But we might say surface area, of course, is uh, square inches or square centimeters or whatever the dimensions are. OK, then it asked to find, we're asked to find the surface area and volume of the figure, give the exact answer and the approximation using the fact that pi is 3.14. These two wavy lines mean approximately. Pi is not exactly 3.14. But that's the approximation we're using for this. Volume is the space inside. I should have done space surface area first, but I'm doing volume first. It's the space inside, like if you poured water into a container. It's three-dimensional, so it's to the third power when we're done. In brief, we can say volume is base times height, but that base down here, that gray area, those are bases. That base is pi r squared. It's just the area of a circle that's on the top and bottom. So a little bit less brief then would be pi r square h. The exact volume means to leave that pi symbol in. So if we take pi r squared h, pi, our r is 2, 2 squared times h is 10. And then you can see 2 to the second power is 4, times 10 is 40. So 40 pi, and then we have third power because it's a three-dimensional shape. That would be the exact value. But then they say, what about the approximate value? And the approximate value uh, volume of this would be to multiply that pi uh, by the pi approximation that was given. We don't always use 3.14. You have to look to see what you were given. And so we have pi r squared h written out here again. But this time, instead of pi, we're going to put that 3.14 in. 2 squared is 4 times 10. Notice that I changed my equal to an approximation symbol as soon as I plug that in. And I can multiply that out. I get 125.6 inches cubed. Up here, you could have just taken 40 times 3.14 and gotten that same answer. This same cylinder, we're going to find the surface area for that. If I scroll down here, if I was to cut a cylinder down the side, like I think about a tin can and cut it down the side and laid it out flat, you'd have the top and the bottom and you'd have that cylinder flattened out as just a rectangle. And so we know that the circumference of a circle is pi uh, is pi times 2r, or diameter times pi. So that's really what that dimension is. So when you look at the surface area of a, a cylinder, which is the entire outside of it, you have the rectangular part, which is pi r, uh, 2 pi r h, sorry, this is just length times width like you would any other rectangle. And then you have these two circle parts, which are pi r squared on each of those. So you have two of those, so 2 pi r squared. And we want to do this leaving the exact, to find the exact surface area, we want to leave the pi symbol in. And so we're just going to replace uh, everything we have given in here and leaving that pi symbol in. We know that we already have a 2 here and a 2 there. So those are already there. And then we have r, which is 2, and h, which is 10. 
If we plug all that in and multiply it out, we get 40 pi plus 8 pi, which is 48 pi inches squared. So remember, our surface area is always square units, not, not to the third power, because it's just two-dimensional. You can see how we can just lay that flat, and it's just got a length and a width, basically. And if we want that with the uh, approximated version, then I would just take where I had pi before and put that 3.14 in and multiply that out to get approximately 150.72 inches squared. You could have gotten that by taking 48 times 3.14 as well. The next one is a formula that's given in a problem. A repair company's charge for repairing a certain type of copy machine fits the model y equals 63.73 plus 0.845x, where y is the number of dollars charged and x is the number of minutes the repair person is on the job. So you have a flat fee and then you have a cost per how long it takes a person to do the job. How many minutes would it take for the cost of repair to reach $104.29 to the nearest minute? We're asked to find the minutes required to reach this, and we're told up here that minutes is x. x is the number of minutes. So in this particular formula, we are trying to find out what x is, and we're going to replace y with the $104.29 because we want to figure out if it costs this much money, how many minutes did somebody work on that. So what I want to do first is subtract 63.73 from both sides. That gives me 40.56. And then I have this by itself. I want to get rid of this by dividing both sides of the equation by 0 0.845. And when I, what that looks like is putting both of those over that number and dividing. And that gives me the x over here because the two numbers here are the same. They cancel out. And over here I get 48 minutes. So it would take 48 minutes for them to charge that much money. Okay, and now finally to solve for a formula, um, you can. there's a bunch of different problems that come up. They're all different, but I kind of want you to see it's just like solving any other equation. If I want to get x by itself, then I want to start off by getting rid of this negative 9b that's over here. To get rid of something that's being subtracted, we add, and so I would add 9b to both sides of the equation. Adding 9b to minus 9b just makes it go away on the right side, and over here I just have y plus 9b. Would it be wrong to say 9b plus y? No, but I just didn't do it that way. It doesn't matter. That's a so the community of property says you can write those in any order that you want. And then I want to get x by itself because I'm solving for x, so I want to get rid of 3m. And that means I divide both sides by 3m. And what that looks like is y plus 9b over 3m and 3mx over 3m. Now you can see the 3m on the right, top and bottom, cancel out, leaving x. And over here, this is it. That's all we have. Could you have gone a step further and said y over 3m? plus 9b over 3m, yes, you could separate those out because 3m goes under both of those terms, but you cannot just cancel that 3 and 9 right there because that 3 belongs to the y just like it belongs to the 9b, so we can't cancel unless we do separate those out first, but I think this is a perfectly good place to stop. All right, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.